Good morning. Really happy that you're here, that you've come to church today, and I agree with the faith that if you're joining us for the first time, you'll have a depth of an experience uh, this morning and be able to be caught right up to what God's been doing. And those of you who have been with us the last couple of days, as Mitch said, it's been such a joy to be with you and spend this time here. Uh, we really love, love, love being in this house. It does feel like family. So thank you for receiving us so beautifully. And uh, I want to share this morning about emerging from the refuge. And I'm really thankful for worship and what God's been doing in this room already. So powerful, so beautiful. And I actually have a few things that I feel like I'm supposed to uh, minister up front, just because I feel like it's up front on God's heart. And so um, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do that first. So Holy Spirit, I just thank you that um, you are here and there's this nearness of heaven dynamic going on in the room and we honor that. And I thank you, Lord, for uh, what you want to release this morning in the word, but also just through presence, through ministry, through prayer. And I ask that you would help me to hit the target, God, with exactly what's on your heart. Thank you, God. You know, uh, Pastor Ian mentioned to me just a moment ago that you're in this series of pillars, pillars, uh, core values of this house, and that this morning happens to land on presence. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and I love that, and it absolutely ties into what I want to do and what I'm sharing this morning, but I really value the presence so much. It's more important to me than what I have to say or, or speak this morning. And God's presence will minister to you. He already is, yes? yes? But the presence of God will directly minister to you in this time, and he will accomplish in you what only he can do. Yeah? Um, I was praying before I came in this morning over your region and asking God for his heart as we talk about emerging from the refuge today. And I really felt... Um, not exclusively, but one of God's dreams over Fort Erie is that people would have joyful hearts. And I also felt that uh, God was going to deliver people this morning of heaviness, ungodly sorrow, meaning sorrow that sticks around for too long, and depression. And I saw the hand of Jesus coming and he was actually slicing off of the top of your heart something that was heavy and he was removing it. Good news. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so I actually feel like I'm supposed to pray into that first before I dive into the word. And so um, I'm going to ask you to exert some courage. If you want prayer just for a feeling of heaviness on your heart, uh, and that can be small, it could be large. I just want to invite you to stand, and I'm going to pray. We're going to pray and ask God to move in your heart this morning. It's just this faith. It's just you saying, God, yeah, I want that. Just before I pray, thank you for standing, for being courageous. Is there anyone else that would like prayer for heaviness, depression, just a sorrow that you can't seem to shake on your heart? Okay. In the name of Jesus, I bless you this morning. And I welcome the Holy Spirit to come touch you now. And I welcome the hand of Jesus to remove the heaviness off of your heart in Jesus' name. 
And I welcome the presence and the power of God to come on you now to break the power of depression, of heaviness, and ungodly sorrow. And in Jesus' name, I declare breakthrough and a shattering of any stronghold inside that holds you down in a place of sadness. And I declare that you are free to emerge from that place in your heart and you have permission to feel joy again. And regardless of what the root of that is, I declare healing to it right now in the name of Jesus. And I welcome an impartation of the joy of Jesus to come fill your heart right now in Jesus' name. And I separate from you any identity you put on yourself of being a depressed person. I break it in Jesus' name. And I declare that you are made to be joyful. And that is where you are most yourself and most at home. I cancel in Jesus' name any demonic assignment against your life to hold your heart in a place of sadness. And I declare freedom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And if you can even just sense that assignment against your life being broken this morning, I declare that it ends today in Jesus' name. And I welcome baptisms of joy to come even now that you would begin to feel joy in your heart and that you would be the forerunners of God's dream in this region to make the hearts of people joyful. That you would go first and that you would then take people with you into a place of freedom and joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for letting me pray. Um, there's another one. I just felt that there were people here who felt stuck in a place of being fragile. Like something took place that caused you to feel like you lost a sense of fortitude and you can't seem to escape from just feeling fragile. Like there's some kind of identity with fragile that I just saw the Lord uh, severing. And I want you to know that he's done that for me. That specifically I had a breakthrough in this area of feeling fragile all the time and then God delivering me from it and I regained a sense of fortitude. And I feel like he has that for you this morning as well. So if you would like prayer for that, just a fortitude coming into your soul, I just want to invite you to stand and we're going to pray. Thank you, friends, for being brave. I know I'm like literally coming out of the gate, calling things out, but I just feel like this was on the front of God's heart. Uh, so in the name of Jesus, I take authority over any demonic assignment of fragile in Jesus' name, and I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. And I declare that no matter what put you in that place, it is not more powerful than Jesus to deliver you from that place. And so I welcome the presence of Jesus to come now to pull you out of a fragile place and to establish you again in a place of fortitude. And I declare that you are stronger than you know. That even that thought that you're fragile and you're stuck in a fragile place is actually a lie about you that you've overcome so much. I even feel specifically in the last five to seven years, the Lord is saying that you guys who are standing have exerted a lot of courage. The truth about you is you've overcome. And I bless you to rediscover a place of fortitude and to drop the identity of fragile in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Okay, I've got one more of these. <laughs> Is that all right? Yes. Um, what I saw was, and I think it probably relates to n a number of us even, but people that were really able to love others, but when you think about yourself, it's with negativity. Like the ability to love yourself is something that you don't know how to do. 
And even though you're effective in loving people outside of yourself, when you turn your thought to yourself, it comes with negativity. God is going to deliver you right now <laughs> from that thing. And so I want to invite you just to be bold and to stand and ask God to release you from that. And I want to pray for you. Self-love. Thank you, Father. Since the time that you were inside of the womb, God has been watching you with affection. There is nothing about you that's a mistake. Every moment of your journey, his eyes have been towards you with love and with adoration. And wherever that self-negativity, that self-hatred came in, I break its power in your life in the name of Jesus, and I command it to go now in Jesus' name. I pull up out of your soul and spirit and mind that self-negative talk that happens, and I command it to go in Jesus' name. And I welcome the Holy Spirit to touch you now with a divine empowerment to think about yourself rightly and permission to love yourself. That you would be able to actually smile when you think about yourself. And just wait for a moment. Just let God touch your heart in this area. And I even feel like there are a few people that are sitting and I can see God touching your heart too. He's like, it's okay, you're not standing. You're still going to get some of this. <laughs> so just let God just touch you for a moment. Wow. I pray for a baptism of the Father's love to come on each of you right now, washing self-criticism out entirely. And I give you permission to grow in loving yourself the way that he does. Thank you, Father. You are worth, you are worth being loved. I cancel that worthless voice in Jesus' name. And I welcome the value system of the Father to take root inside of your spirit. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, so, Pastor Tina shared a little bit about the refuge, and I'd actually want to put up the picture again that we started with on the first night of the refuge. And the journey that we have had together, even inside of this concept, there is more of taking time together to go seek the Lord in the secret place, to get into that place of being able to separate ourselves to wholeheartedly pursue God and then in that place finding that there is deep healing available for us there's encounter with God that is beyond what we've known before and so this morning if I were to tell you that there were a few people living in that house that were refusing to come out and they were there for decades what would you think about them <laughs> is not exactly healthy, right? <laughs> yes, like hermits. There is coming a time when we go home to be with Jesus forever uh, that we get to do this forever, like Jess was singing about this morning. But we have this limited time on the earth, this assignment from God to be part of expanding his kingdom with power. And so we have to come out because we're called to influence the world. 
And so something happens, like when you go in, uh, as a friend of God, he begins to say to you, hey, will you carry my heart for this, for these people, for this city, for this region, for, for education, for this art form, whatever it is, will you carry my heart and will you come out from this place to extend what you know of him into another realm? God has called you and I, friends, to influence for him. And so I want you just to think for a moment about what influence God has called you to. And maybe you have influence over a business. Maybe you have influence over a sibling. Maybe you have influence over your home, over your apartment. But everybody has influence over something. You Really. <laughs> Some of you may or may not know that about you but you do every one of us has influence over something and my question to you to think about as we move through this is what is God given you influence over what has he called you to so I believe that as we emerge from the refuge uh, that God speaks this over us out of Isaiah 58 12 and I speak this over you those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins you will raise up the age-old foundations and you will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets in which to dwell. And I want to focus on this term, repairer of the breach, this morning. That I believe that you and I are called to be people that actually repair the breach. So if you have a wall and a piece of it is broken, repairing the breach means repairing the broken part of the wall so it comes together. If you have a bridge that's broken, that's the breach, and repairing it is bringing it together. It's bringing it into its divine blueprint. The presence of God is what repairs the breach. The presence of God is what repairs the breach in us. When we have a missing or broken piece, the presence of God is what repairs that breach. <laughs> but we are actually called to be people that build with our hands to bring something back into its divine blueprint, back into what it was intended to be. So if you and I say about Fort Erie, God, what is your dream over this place? And we get a vision for that, then repairing the breach of putting our hands to it to actually bring it into its place of what is its divine blueprint. And when God has called you to repair the breach, maybe it's in your family. Like I said, it could be in an art form, <laughs> in, a, in a business, in a town, whatever it is that God's called you to, there are some things that you might feel as God is repairing preparing you to repair the breach. Sometimes it can feel like you belong in two worlds and almost like you're pulled between them. Like you're here, but you don't totally feel like you belong here, and then you're here and you don't totally feel like you belong there. But I would say, hey, there is a flag that you may actually be called to repair a breach between these two worlds. Like you're straddling some two things. Does that make sense? You've got one foot in here where God's given you influence, but you, there's something in your heart that's drawing you to that. And in that case, I don't think it's a divided heart. I think God's actually called you to repair the breach and carry from this world something into that world to restore it into its divine blueprint. Okay, so I want to give you some practical things because I believe that you're called to influence and repair the breach. <laughs> Sometimes when you're called to repair the breach, you feel like 
you found your tribe somewhere, but you're not even released of God to always be with them. Because he's calling you to another people as well, or another space as well, and to bridge that gap. Okay. Are you with me? <laughs> Am I making sense? <laughs> All right, so what we're doing this morning is we're intentioning in our heart to step out of the refuge with a vision to repair the breach, and for each of us it's different, the influence that God has called us to. But the presence of God is absolutely key in all of it. So we have uh, some examples. I have some examples for you of repairs of the breach. So David in 2 Samuel 6 actually brings the Ark of the Covenant back home to the Israelites. And there are times when repairing the breach means you are carrying the presence of God back into a space and setting it up to reside there. Some of you are called, like David, to actually repair the breach in bringing the manifest presence of God into a different space. Does anyone relate to that? Yeah? yeah? Solomon in 1 Kings 8 and 9, this is interesting, repairs the breach of actually building and dedicating the temple, which is something that was talked about before his generation. And he was repairing the breach between a promise God gave, to, gave before he was on the scene that he knew about. But it was in his time that it was meant to come into being. And some of you are actually called to repair the breach for generational promises or things God's spoken about or maybe spoken about in this church 10 years ago that haven't come to fruition yet and you're part of putting it on its feet now. So actually rehearsing the prophetic promises over this community can be so powerful because maybe you're called to repair the breach, whatever the breach is between that prophetic promise and the now time that it'll be on its feet. Like Solomon. In 1 Kings 18, we have Elijah who actually restores fire. <laughs> and it's intense. <laughs> It's really interesting. I just feel like sometimes when I'm getting dull inside, I will just go meditate here in 1 Kings 18 with Elijah calling fire down from heaven. And by the time I sit with that story for long enough, like I'm stirred up, you know? Because his boldness to pour water out all over the place and confront all these prophets of Baal on his own and then watch the sovereign power of God come, it's just amazing. It's amazing, but there are places, friends, where there's religious activity, but fire has gone out. Are there are spaces where good things are happening, but honestly, the fire is not there. And think about your own sphere of influence, okay? Like some of you are called to repair the breach of restoring the fire of God to the scene, where the sovereign power of God has a space, has a place, and is working. And as with Elijah, sometimes that involves confrontation. It's not always the case with restoring the fire, <laughs> where everyone's like, will you please come restore the fire for us? <laughs> not necessarily. When our hearts become dull, we forget that that's what we want and even need. And sometimes people need a reminder about that. Restoring the fire. We have King Josiah in 2 Kings 22, who restores the word of God to the community. This, for some of you, this is the peace in your personal life. Repairing the breach for you means you falling in love with the word again. You know, we go through these seasons where we love it and we're in it and then we're not, honestly. Like our heart becomes dull to and we're not investing the time in the word. 
It's an amazing story, Josiah. It's an amazing story of the, the word actually being found, like dust on it, while they're cleaning up the temple. And then Josiah has him read it to him. And when he hears it, he says, whoa, whoa, are, whoa am I? <laughs> like, if this is true, we're going to be coming under judgment. <laughs> This reminder of the word that calls the community back into a place of alignment with the truth and the word of God. So for some of you, restoring the breach, this is what it looks like. Picking up your Bible and going, God, would you cause me to fall in love with your word again? And those of you who have leadership responsibilities in your workplace, What about seeping yourself in biblical principles so that what you're executing with others is aligned with the word of God and integrity? Uh, Then we have our beloved Messiah, King Jesus, who steps down into our world and repairs the breach between the Father and all of humanity for all time. That's amazing. (laughs) Who steps into our world, who literally takes on flesh and steps into our world and repairs the breach so that anyone can be saved regardless of our history, right? That we can be washed clean by the blood of Jesus. He is the champion repairer of the breach. So here's a few things. When God is calling you, to repair the breach when he's calling you to be part of building his divine blueprint in a new sphere of influence. First of all, fall in love with what God has called you to influence. Fall in love with what God has called you to influence. We see Jesus weeping even over Jerusalem When he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it. He gave himself so that the world through him could be saved. He speaks to Jerusalem, You who kill the prophets and stone those who sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. (sighs) When you can feel love and affection for something, God will use you to influence it. If all you have is a hard heart agenda to try to fix something and make it into what you want it to be, you're probably not going to get too far. Remember, not too long ago, the Lord called me into an organization that I was not expecting to have favor in. That was a very different spiritual atmosphere than what I was used to. And the first meeting I was speaking in, I felt like I got a very clear prophetic word for the community, but the Lord told me, don't give it. And he said to me, I don't want you prophesying here until you love these people. And it was a journey of a couple months for me to actually be able to see and value what was going on in this environment because it was so different than what I was used to and what I naturally value. And I was driving down the hallway, um, driving down the the road one day, and there was a billboard advertisement for this organization. And when I saw the organization listed, I started to cry tears of affection and love. (laughs) And I felt like the Holy Spirit said, yeah, now. You can go prophesy to these people. Can you love your city? Can you love the ones in your family that you're believing to come home? Fall in love with what you're called to influence. Also, treasure the work of the Holy Spirit. 
When you're called to repair the breach, friends, it is not all on you. God has hands and he does good work. (laughs) So make room for the sovereign work of God to be involved in what you're doing and what he's called you to. Amazing things can happen. Also, when you and I are called to repair the breach, we want to think about legacy, what's happened before us and what will happen after us. We pick up the torch for a season, right? In a family line, in a business, in a vocation. We pick it up for a season, and it's in our hands. And it matters how far and fast I run with that fiery thing in my hand, yes. But it doesn't matter nearly as much if I don't effectively pick it up and then hand it off. Right? And I believe that every one of us, regardless of how we identify with our biological family and opportunity for legacy, I believe every one of us has legacy and a call from God to leave a legacy. To be part of something that's bigger than us that we hand off to others. Can you hear that? (laughs) You know, I have so struggled with the identity of motherhood because I have so much loss in that area. And it took me until this year, this is like a 10-year journey, to realize that God has called me as a spiritual mom. Right? That I I am actually to mother things, I'm to help birth things. But because of my story being kind of off the rail, in terms of motherhood, I didn't actually identify as being someone who was able to have a legacy. But I am saying to you, no matter what your story is, God has called you to have a spiritual legacy. And you can do it just by investing in loving and influencing something outside of yourself, anything, something outside of yourself. You are made to leave an imprint on this earth and no one is limited from that opportunity because we belong in the family of God and he's called us to it yes okay we're coming in for a landing (laughs) before too long There's something when you are working to influence things outside of the church, outside of of this community, about valuing the role of prayer. Prayer, like, pulls heaven and earth together. It's like the thread that brings heaven and earth together. And as you invest in prayer, you will see the presence of God manifest. And more work will take place than you could ever do with just your own two hands. I love studying revival history and the role of prayer in it. There was a man named Jeremiah who started a prayer meeting in New York City one hour a day from 12 to 1 over his lunch break just consistently seeking the Lord. And this prayer meeting grew and grew. And before long, all over the city, people were shutting down their businesses over lunch to just seek the Lord and pursue him in prayer. And a revival ensued. Over a million people came to the Lord through that move of God because of one man's like intent to be consistent in the place of prayer. When you set out to repair the breach, you've got to be all in. (laughs) Wholehearted, confident about who you are and what you have to bring. You and I are carrying the pearl of great price, friends. And the world is aching for redemption. And we really do have good news and we really do have answers.
We really do have the ability to dream for people that cannot dream for themselves, to get vision for regions that are feeling depressed. Because of our connection to heaven through Jesus, we really are carrying something that is so worth sharing. There was a young boy named Henry who lived downtown Connecticut in a really tough neighborhood, and he never knew his father. The situation at home was violent to the point where he ran away from home and was living on the streets. And a pastor came into those streets, I will say a repairer of the breach, (laughs) stepped into his world and invited him to church. And he went. And in time, he gave his life to Jesus. (laughs) And the people in this church so loved this boy that they extended what I would call the spirit of adoption to him. He had dropped out of school. They helped him finish, get his GED, took him in, And it turns out that this young boy was brilliant. He went on to higher education. He gave his life to full-time ministry. And he wrote over 25 books. And that man is my grandpa. You understand, one repair of the breach stepped in and closed the gap for one little boy. And two and three generations later, this looks like something. (coughs) Some of you are called to one person to repair the breach in one life. And that's not a subpar call when it comes to influence. Yes? So I want to encourage and hopefully inspire you this morning to think about your sphere of influence and what it would look like for you to carry the presence of God into it, to repair the breach of the fire of God being present, to believe where perhaps someone else can't believe for themselves and not to measure (laughs) what God is calling to you against someone else's call, but to be faithful with whatever he's given you to influence, to trust that maybe even two generations later, thousands of people would be coming to Jesus because you invested in this one life. You are called to repair the breach, friends. And you're going to be good at it. (laughs) Like skill builders, bringing things to their divine blueprint for Jesus. Yeah. Okay. What I want to do is pray over you related to this, and then we're going to take a quick break from me talking. (laughs) Uh, and pastor's going to share some things. And then we'll go into a time of ministry. If you're able to stay this morning, we will be praying for people, opening up the altar to minister. Throughout the last couple days, we've been seeing God do beautiful, powerful things through prayer ministry at the altar. And I have an expectation that it will be the same and more this morning. There are times on a Sunday morning where I feel like my assignment is to kind of help land the plane, but I didn't feel that at all today. I felt like it was to help it take off, you know, (laughs) like that there's a launching grace, I feel like, um, on the house today. And so I would anticipate just God moving in power as we do prayer ministry. But I want to pray over you just related to repair of the breach. If this is something you connect with, God is stirring something in you, 
There is no pressure either way, but if God is stirring something in you, he's calling you to repair the breach. Maybe you know what it's for, maybe you don't. I just want to invite you to stand. I want to pray over you, and um, then we'll transition to some ministry. That's exciting. You have any idea how much could happen through this many people? <laughs> just catching a vision for something? Yay! So good. Thank you, God. So, God, I just thank you for what you are stirring inside of people this morning as it relates to being, I believe it's a type of revivalist, honestly, that repairs the breach, that brings something to life. And in Jesus' name, I bless you to be full of vision and full of hope for what's possible in your realm of influence. I pray, Holy Spirit, for a quickening work inside of hearts to fall in love with what you've called us to influence. I pray for divine connections, God, that you would give these people favor in the spheres that you've called them to. I pray even in the next couple of days that conversations would happen and networking would happen and doors would begin to open for them to expand in influence and authority in the places you've called them to. And I bless each of you and the spiritual legacy that God has called you to, the thing that he's called you to invest in in your lifetime, the dream you have of what you want to see while you're on the earth. I bless those dreams in Jesus' name. And I pray for an empowerment of the Holy Spirit to come on you and a new wind at your back from this morning for you to put your hands to building for the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I ask that you would touch these ones with your presence and your power to be repairs of the breach. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. We pray that your life was impacted by this service and you are able to feel the tangible love of Jesus fill whatever space you're listening from. Maybe you found this message and you've never had the opportunity to come into a personal relationship with Jesus, or you've known about him, but been far from him. We want to give you the opportunity to make his love a daily reality in your life. Jesus came to this earth and died on the cross so that you could be close to him. He wanted to wipe away every disappointment and bring you into a life of purpose and meaning one that will impact this globe for good. If you'd like to begin this journey with Jesus today, then just repeat this simple prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I'm praying this prayer because I know that I've made mistakes and been living without you. I apologize and I trust that you will forgive me. I accept your love and grace and ask that you would be my savior and my Lord. Help me believe in you and love you every day and help me to show the world what you're like and how great your love is. I commit to live for you from this moment forward. In Jesus' name, amen. All of our Light City family are joining with heaven and celebrating over the commitment you have just made to make Jesus the Lord of your life. We have resources available for you to help you on this journey. And most of all, we're praying for you. Send us a note at info at golightcity.com to let us know about the decision you've made today. We have resources we would love to send you with some easy steps on where to go from here so that you can discover God in a real and meaningful way. If you have a prayer request, our team would love to connect with you and partner with you to see God transform your life. God bless you and we look forward to hearing from you real soon.